Hello everyone, welcome to problem 1.2 of uh, Townsend's um, A Modern Approach to Quantum Mechanics. So, for this problem, it says to show that for a solid spherical ball of mass m rotating about an axis through its center with a charge q uniformly distributed on the surface of the ball, that the magnetic moment mu is related to the angular momentum l by the relation in the book. So it says that mu is equal to 5q over 6mc times the angular momentum L. And there is a, uh, the C is in the equation because they use Gaussian units. In my example, I'm gonna be using SI units, so there won't be a factor of C in the uh, answer, but it'll be exactly the same. So, Let's just start from a diagram of our situation. So we have a solid sphere um, that is rotating uh, about its z-axis. So we have x coming out of the board, y parallel uh, with the board, z uh, going vertical. And it is just smothered uniformly with a charge q. We have, um, it has a radius of big R. I have denoted it rotating, uh, I guess, counterclockwise or this way, where the uh, angular momentum is up. Um, and it's rotating with a speed of, or angular velocity of omega. And then I've sort of drawn out a small spherical uh, ring here because, um, as you'll see for the problem, we have to split this spherical, uh, this sh uh, the, the sphere into infinitesimally small spherical rings that get larger and smaller as you go up the ring, uh, up the sphere and, and vice versa. So, um, and each uh, ring has a infinitesimal area of dA. Um, and then obviously like the width is dA uh, has an infinitesimal like area width da and then each ring itself is it's a solid ring so it has an area a and that area a is it changes as you go uh, it gets smaller as you go up the sphere and it gets larger as you get towards the middle of the sphere so recall that the magnetic moment mu um, for a you know a current going in a circular path is equal to the current times the area uh, of that path, of that like circular path. As I said, we cut the sphere into infinitesimally small rings, sort of parallel to the y-axis in this case. So um, I just drew one example of this ring here. If we want to think about the current, the I that each ring has, not the total current of the sphere, but just an infinitesimal current of of that singular ring. Um, we can figure that current out by saying, well, current is, you know, charge per time. So if we think about uh, the sphere having a uniform charge density, sigma, then, um, which is the charge per unit area, then we multiply that by dA, which is the... Uh, I guess the, the infinitesimal width here uh, that makes up that charge along the, along the outer uh, uh, surface of the sphere because the charge is smothered on the outside of the sphere, not on the inside of the sphere, even though it's solid. Uh, so we want that area, that tiny width of the ring, which is dA, and we divide that by T, which is the period of rotation. So that gives, us a, that gives us a charge. This is just charge per unit area times area, which is charge per unit time, because T is uh, in units of time. So that gives us the um, infinitesimal current of each ring, where sigma is the total charge Q, which I've denoted here in the diagram, divided by the surface area of the sphere, uh, four pi capital R squared, uh, which is just the, the, the charge per unit area that gives us uh, the sigma, the surface charge density. 
And then obviously the period T expressed in terms of the angular uh, velocity is just two pi over omega. Little r here is the radius of each ring. Um, and that little radius changes as you go up and down the sphere. So you can express little r in terms of the actual radius. Um, so it's r is equal to capital R sine theta because little r is just that horizontal component of the larger radius. Because as um, if you just think about, uh, if you draw it out, capital R, little r, um, that horizontal com component decreases as you go up the sphere uh, and increases as you go down the sphere. So this is the relation between those two. Um, dA here is the infinitesimal area of the ring, uh, the, the infinitesimal width of that ring, so that, that width that way, all the way around the ring, that, that area of the strip essentially around the ring, because that's where the charge lies. Um, so that's just rd theta, which is that, that infinitesimal like spherical uh, width, and then times the circumference, 2 pi r, that gives you the infinitesimal area of each ring. And so moving on to here, now we can find the infinitesimal magnetic moment of each ring. Um, because we know that the magnetic moment is related to the current in the area. So d mu is equal to the infinitesimal current of each ring times the area of each ring. And that area A is the area of that cross section that the ring makes with the sphere, that, that flat area, not the width area, but the flat area. So that's what that A is. And that A is just pi r squared, little r squared, the radius of that ring, because that area A changes as you go up the sphere and down the sphere. It gets smaller as you go up and bigger as you get closer to the middle. But we know that little r is given by this. So plug that into here and you get r squared sine squared of theta. And anyways, we can then, we have this expression which we can then integrate to get the total magnetic moment of the entire sphere. So doing this integral, you know, plugging what we have in here and the bounds of integration go from zero, theta equals zero to pi. Theta is the angle from the vertical axis down. So that's our bounds of integration. Um, pulling out constants, basically, and plugging in for di here, di is the infinitesimal current of each ring, which we found in this previous section here, which is this. So plugging in, you know, we have the pi r squared, pull it out, we have the theta over t, which we have, we have the two pi r from da here, um, and then with capital R, then I have the little r sine squared of theta d theta. And I left little r inside the integral because it, it, it depends on theta, which is our um, variable of integration here. So plugging in that little r and uh, also plugging in some more terms, so replacing sigma with, in terms of the charge and the surface area, and replacing the period t in terms of the angular velocity omega. We basically get this uh, jumbulation of constants here, uh, two pi squared r cubed q omega divided by two pi times four pi r squared. Anyways, a lot of that cancels, as you'll see in the next step. Um, and then plugging in little r here, you get big R sine cubed of theta with, uh, integrated with respect to theta with the same bounds. So then pulling that big R out, canceling all those constants, we, we get a nice little uh, constant out here, R squared Q omega over four. And then our integral just becomes the integral of sine cubed of theta d theta with respect to, uh, with bounds of theta going from zero to pi. I did not do this integral all out by hand. Well, I did it myself, but uh, on the board, it's just too much. Um, and it's a pretty simple integral. Use a substitution of um, u equal cosine of theta, and you can get it to split into two very easy integrals, and then you can solve it by there. So I just recommend just quickly trying to do this integral to practice your guys' uh, integration techniques. Um, but when you get to the final answer, you should get that the integral is equal to four thirds after you plug in the bounds. And so just doing the math here, what you get by multiplying the constant by four thirds is Q omega R squared over three. So we have the total magnetic moment of the sphere now, of the rotating sphere. That's awesome. 
how then is it related to the angular momentum? That's what we're trying to show is that the magnetic moment is related to the, uh, the angular momentum by this relation 5 6 uh, Q over M. Yeah, without the C. So the, the angular moment, momentum of a sphere is pretty easy to look up in any textbook or online. It's a pretty basic physics problem because the angular momentum is just given by the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. So you can look up the moment of inertia of a sphere or you can you know, figure it out yourself. But anyways, the angular momentum of a sphere is easily, you know, you can find that easily to be two fifths times the mass times the radius squared times the angular velocity. So this, if you then do a comparison between our magnetic moment and the angular momentum here, you can see that this relation holds true. For example, take the angular momentum, multiply it by five. Okay, multiply this by five, that would cancel a five. Divide this by six, you'd get one third, which is what we have up here, one third. Multiply by Q and divide by M, so multiply Q divided by M, that'd be one third um, QR squared, one third QR squared, and then we have the angular momentum. So if you just real quick, like take L, multiply by this stuff, you will see that you get what we have here. And that's how you do the basic check to show that our answer here is correct and that this relation holds true. All right, so that's it. That's problem 1.2. If you guys have any questions or concerns, comments, please let me know below. Um, I have swapped to using this whiteboard because, um, well, honestly, I like working on a whiteboard better. So um, I just think better on a whiteboard instead of doing it on the paper. And one and two, I hope you guys don't mind this pre-solved sort of format. You know, I have a lot going on in my life. I have a um, full-time, part-time job, uh, pilot's license. I'm, I'm studying for my pilot's license. I have a girlfriend, dog, um, just stuff to do. So trying to solve the problems out first, then resolve them on camera was a very tedious and long process because some problems got to be very long. Like, Problem 2.7 for uh, David Griff's fight, for example, I solved that for like an hour and then like spent another hour and a half trying to record and edit that video. It just got to be way too long. So this is going to be the format from now on because it's just a better use of my time. And hopefully I can, you know, make the diagrams and everything very clear for you guys. So that's about it. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys on problem 1.3. See ya.